all right ladies and gentlemen we are now going to enter into the ninth school of thought of strategic management the last school of thought you have learnt about was cultural school of thought if you remember that in our discussion of strategic management there are three main actors the organization the environment and the leadership and if you remember discussion in earlier schools that aim of strategic management is to create a fit between the organization and its environment and the element or the actor which actually ensures the fit between the organization and its environment is known as the leadership we'll be talking about more in detail about the relationship between the organization its environment and the role of leadership let's now talk about this environmental school of thought as in different schools of thought you remember that there were different central points our main issue is to understand that how organizations formulate strategies or how strategies are formed in the organizations environment you all understand that this includes in principle everything which is around an organization and in the previous discussions we have discussed environment as a factor and it was never out of our discussion but it was also never as central to our discussion as it is going to be in this particular school this particular school is known as environmental school of strategic management or strategy because in this school environment is considered as an actor and organization is something acted upon by the environment you all are well familiar with this debate that whether in this world we have the free will or we have the will to choose our choices or make our choices or we are forced or bound by our environment to do something actually the both point of views will be taking in this particular school of thought the this particular school of thought centrally believes that environment plays the central role in the making of strategy or in the determination of the choices an organization takes or makes during the course of its operations in the marketplace or in its life we'll be talking about different aspects let's move to the main point that organization leadership and its environment here i would like to make one thing very clear to all of you that earlier also it has been referred that environment of any organization which includes different actors factors and so many forces now it is taken as collectively as an actor to the organization remember that environment is always dynamic compared to the dynamism of the environment it is argued that organizations are less dynamic or they are more bureaucratic rather they are less dynamic or they are more static on one side there is dynamic or ever changing environment and on the other side there is a relatively static organization and apparently there is a mismatch and apparently it seems that the organizations will not survive in the face of dynamic environment but actually organizations survive why because there is another very important factor or actor or element that is known as leadership the role of leadership is actually on the one hand to just modify not modify just try to moderate the dynamism of the or effects of the dynamic environment and on the other hand just try to break the stationary state of the organization or to just to make organization less static and more dynamic so that a fit can be created between the environment and the organization actually this happens in the organization that's why 
the role of leadership is very important. And as I earlier mentioned that this particular school is considering environment not merely as a factor but as a central actor, the actor which can affect seriously the organization's ability to make its choices. So the choice of the organization to take a path is actually constrained by its environment. That's why environment is taken in the school as an actor. As I mentioned that the discussion of the environment was never out of our discussion or its mentioning was never silent during our discussion of the previous eight schools. It was always there, but it was not there as a central actor. Rather, it was there as a factor. Let us now see that how we have taken the environment in the different schools of thought we have talked about so far. In the design school, if you remember that, the, it was all about that strategy is designed. It's designed, it's planned, rather, and it's in, in the design of the strategy. It is always considered that what is around the organization. Rather, in the design school, organization is the nucleus of the discussion, but it's the, the, the discussion of the organization is considered with reference to its environment there. So environment is analyzed, environment is taken into the consideration. Same is the case with the planning school, but when you are planning, you are planning a course of action, planning to take a path, you definitely consider your environment. So environment is analyzed. The realities of the environments are accounted for before making a decision of the choice or taking a path by the organization. Same is the case with the positioning school, which was about that organization's strategy actually is to take a position in the marketplace. And if you remember that the in the positioning school, the environment was mainly economic environment, the competitive environment, which included the other firms, which included the buyers and suppliers. And if you remember that, we discussed about the five forces, which actually create the environment in which an organization assumes a position or it assumes a distinct image or position relative to the other organizations. Even in the entrepreneurial school, the environment was not absent. Though entrepreneurial school was centrally focused on the VN of an individual who creates the organization, but that individual with the passage of time modifies his VN. Why? Because of the changing environment. So environment was also there when we were talking about the entrepreneurial school. And in case of the cognitive school, if you remember that though the strategy was taken as a mental process, but the mental process was to work in a context and that context was made by the organizational environment. In the learning school, we actually took environmental discussion or discussion in about the environment in little more detail because learning school assumed this particular phenomena that organizations do not work with a fully planned strategies. Rather, they have to evolve and they have to develop their strategies and root. And root means that once they are on the path of working, they encounter the environment and encounter of the environment as environment is a changing dynamic, is a changing factor. So as environment changes, organizations learn and they change their strategies accordingly. So discussion of environment was also in the present in the learning school. In the power school, it was even present with a more consideration and with more significance. But if you remember that organizations were supposed to be strong actors in the environment and to take active path in order to have more and more resources for the environment to create their position and to pursue their strategies. In the cultural school, it was also important because the culture of the organization initially sets in response to its environment. From the discussion of this schools and its relationship with the environmental school, one thing is very clear. 
in the design and planning school the role of the strategist was of a planner and analyst but in case of the environmental school his role is as of a leader the one who actively tries to create harmony between the organization and its environment in this particular school you will be learning a very important thing that the environmental school is mainly influenced by two theories contingency theory and population ecology theory and i'll be throwing light on both of the theories in the due course in the coming parts of the lecture let us now conclude here this particular part that ladies and gentlemen the environment is not only a factor or a passive thing in the strategy formation or formulation process rather the environment is a very very active actor which certainly influences the organization and it certainly limits the choices an organization can make and this is the essence of the environmental school hope things are clear